<laughs> Alright, so let me start. Okay, guys, uh, welcome to another episode of What a Time to Podcast. So this week, uh, we have a very, very special guest, actually. Uh, probably the most experienced guest that we've had. Oh, yeah. um, um, it is James. So James is um, currently working, I mean, we can mention it, right? Yeah. Currently working in fintech as well. Yeah. Has a vast, probably the most accomplished CV I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> but currently is a, and I think you phrased it, a um, career coach. Career and mindset transformation coach. There we go. Couldn't have said it better. Yeah. Coming straight from the man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, guys, I know uh, we mainly cover, you know, entrepreneurs and people who've had experience in that, but this uh, is something very, very unique. We've wanted to have this on for a very long time, actually. Yes. Like I've really looked for someone in this space yeah. and luckily Before we, we found... Before we even started the podcast, we said yeah. we need to have a live... I'm not going to say live coach, because <laughs> but yeah, but someone yeah. who is who's basically all about mindset. Hundred percent, and that's what we want to focus on in the podcast. So we've got probably the most accomplished person for that. Mm -hmm. uh, James, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, very thank kind you very of much. you. You've had a lot of great guests, so I take that uh, with a great compliment. No, thank honestly, and no, it's been. I mean, having the conversation as well, we're already learning and covering a few stuff, and I'm sure the guys as well, the audience uh, would love to learn more. Um, thing about these guys as well, most of them are workers as well, so they really are looking for successful, you know, successful careers, okay. and hopefully this episode is what they can really home into. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to start off um, actually talking about yourself. Okay. <laughs> so um, we really want to delve into you know um, your experiences because one thing you mentioned as well is you know um, anyone can really be a, a life coach, right? Yeah. But it really takes someone with an experience and like you said, other mentors which you've learned from for that knowledge to bring forward. And speaking on the phone as well, um, how you got into this space is really interesting because you've been essentially a mentor and coach all your life in your career. You right. really progressed through finance, I think 20 years of experience in total, right? Yeah, and, and some more. Yeah. And some more now as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think 15 years at UBS banking as well, wasn't it, That's where right, you became yes. a CEO, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, we would love to get like a general overview just, um, you know, because you came from South Africa, lived in New York, you know, how roughly you started and how you got into the life coaching. So, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad you said people think I've got a funny accent. I'm originally from South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> came to the UK um, 1996, actually, so a long time ago. Wow. Um, yeah, so look, I, I followed a, a standard three-year degree in business mm -hmm. um, in South Africa, economics, business administration and marketing, but really trained to be an accountant. So once I, I, I didn't complete the full accountancy because I just really wanted to get out there. So I did mm. the articles, came over to the UK and started working at a consulting company as in the accounting area. So it yep. wasn't even called Accenture then, it was Anderson Consulting. So I'm oh, really right. aging myself. Wow. <laughs> I did that for two years and then all my friends were in banking. So I thought, what's all this banking about? They seem yeah. to be you know, doing pretty well. So that's how I ended up getting into banking. It was really, I saw my friends doing it and I thought, let me give it a try. Yeah. Obviously, the f in the finance department, so I had experience in the finance department. And that was the start of a 15-year career at UBS. And mm -hmm. I guess that a couple of takeaways from that are, one, if you do a good job for, for people internally and externally, you get recognized and opportunities arise. Yeah. I also had an opportunity to move abroad. So I moved to New York um, after being at UBS for for six years. So really opportunities come up and you've got to grasp them. So yeah. I think uh, sometimes being patient is a good thing. Right. In today's um, world, we want to jump uh, jump around quick. and change jobs yeah. all the time. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to spend 25 years at a company and get a gold watch like you used to, right? <laughs> or a voucher for Amazon yeah. these days. But, yeah. <laughs> but be patient and, and work your way through. So I had a great time there, worked in many different areas. So the area I worked in, um, the products were fixed income equities, foreign exchange trading, commodities, emerging markets. So mm -hmm. as you can see by that, many different areas. Mm, yeah. um, primarily as a, a COO or business manager, chief operating officer. So yep. what you do there is you help drive the strategy forward with the business heads. Right. Um, and yeah, it was a, a fruitful journey. As I said, I lived in New York. That was an incredible experience. I never actually thought about living in America because I really wanted to come to the UK. Right. So I enjoyed that. Mm. And at UBS, you touched on earlier, I met some incredible mentors. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I believe everybody, you can, everybody has a role as a mentor in the workplace. Yeah. yeah. We often put a title on people and say, oh, I've got to join this mentor program or this person's a mentor. 
But if, you, if I could trademark one word, it would be awareness. If you're aware of your surroundings and aware of the people that you work with, you can learn from all of them. Yeah. Mm. See, a lot yeah, of us yeah. aren't really aware of what's going on in the workplace. Yeah. And you know, if, the, if the, the head of the business comes in and they're in a bad mood, you don't go knock on their door and ask them for a pay, pay increase. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to be aware of the temperature. Yeah. My point there is if you're aware of what's going on and you're prepared to listen and, and observe people, everybody there plays a mentorship role. Yeah. Did you sort of have um, that sort of mindset already going? Is that something you developed, that awareness? Because that's not something that people uniquely yeah, you know, really think, have. Yeah, I think I'll tell you a funny story. The reason why I had it was when I was a teenager, my father used to come home from work and the first thing I wanted to ask him was, can he give me some money to buy something? <laughs> and my mother says, let him take his suit off and then ah, go and bother him. Okay. So I was ingrained in early age. But that's right. another lesson. Tell, it's yeah. about... I, I realized that in, in the workplace adapted to it. So mm -hmm. we all have our, our moments yeah. where we learn from. But yeah. that's something that people can, yeah. can probably uh, recognize. Yeah. Right? And that's already the first lesson as well. Because that's something people uniquely, they don't yeah. really do at the start. You just think, I've got my task here, let me go in. Yeah. But having that awareness, like you said, you can ask certain things and you can grasp certain opportunities as yeah. well. It's like I also think that because today everybody wants immediate results for things they want things to happen quickly which well, there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. but being patient awareness and patience go hand in hand right yeah you want to ask the first question but sometimes the timing is going to be off right so you have to work out when is the right time to ask the question or to go and approach somebody on a certain yeah. topic especially if it's it's a sensitive topic like a pay increase or can you take a day's leave or yeah these things are when you're busy those are trigger points when you're managing people. Of course, yeah. yeah. There was a there was a part of um like like you mentioned it, like that your mother actually <laughs> taught this. Yeah. It's basically your life experience. You you taking your own life experience and kind of converting into your work life itself. Um, because you've moved like you moved from South Africa, you were lived in South Africa, moved to New to America, then to the UK. Yeah. Wasn't there ever like a kind of like um you know a feeling like look where do I fit in kind of uh, because, you know, a lot of times, especially when you are at a workplace, because, you know, you mentioned like, oh, there's people working, my friends are working at banking, let me go try it. Yeah. Rather than actually thinking that, oh my God, how am I going to get in? You actually had the mindset of, let me just give it a go. Is that something that, mm. you know, is because you want to fit in somewhere or how, how does that really work? It's a great question. Um, I stuck to my basics. So my basics were, at the time, I knew finance. Mm. So there's always a route in roles in, in, in basics. Often what happens is we want to jump roles, but we want to go from, uh, you know, I want to be a, a, a salesperson when actually you're a good operations person. Yeah, right. Those are the examples. Or you could have different examples in different industries. Yeah. So often a way to get into an industry is to use your basics and then work your way in as opposed to trying to l jump in. And often yeah. when I'm coaching people, they want to change industries straight away, which is great, but sometimes there's a stepping stone to get there. Mm, yeah and and we, we forget that 100 yeah. percent. it's like we mentioned you got to uh, build a house a brick at a time yeah take, take those small steps and you'll get to your destination agreed agreed yeah so so just touching back on on the career so i was fortunate with i met a lot of men had a lot of good mentors as well as observing right. the people around me yeah and I, I i tell you i never say a bad word about that company because i learned so much yeah they really cared about their staff and it was a good environment mm. and i believe everybody work together as a team right collaboration yeah. after after 15 years there i moved on to another bank which was a great place to work as well i was challenged in different roles there so from a personal perspective i learned a, a lot um and yeah i've i've worked in a couple of different industries currently i'm moved into a fintech so yeah another lesson is i'm working for people that i used to work with at ubs so you build relationships yeah. in the workplace right. and you may not see an immediate return, but sometimes you get that call or you stay in touch with people. Yeah. So, so, you know, we talked about it in terms of one of the issues where people struggle with, you, you asked, you know, what kind of tips can you learn about motivation or, or how you get ahead? Networking is one of those key points. Mm. Yeah. Networking doesn't mean going out with a whole lot of people and to a cocktail party and getting hammered. <laughs> I when I refer to networking, yeah. it's targeted networking. Yeah, yeah, or, or even just staying in touch with people you used to work with. Yep, it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I agree with that. Yeah. Could you could you 
maybe elaborate more on this targeted networking yeah. because that's um that's interesting it's it's not the first time i heard this term but um but yeah is this something you could elaborate more sure so if you want to get into startups and fintech right the the best place to network is find out when because there's a lot of events that happen with startups or fintech right. so you okay. want to hang out in those environments it's no good going to you know a, a legal event when you want to get into a yeah. startup without you have no interest in, in in law yeah so that's what i talk about targeted right. it's more focused on being the you know, right room yeah being the I right mean, room yeah some people are very good at it and and you can see you know i originally was very reluctant with networking because you think it's you think you don't have much to offer oh i'm gonna go alone how am i gonna meet people but right. actually there's a lot of people in the same boat as you right yeah is that do you do that? Would you go alone to a networking definitely. event? Definitely, I would. I would definitely go along to. I think there's a lot of benefit to be gained from it. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's I amazing. mean, that's an interesting point. Point as well. I think, like, because everyone's in the same sort of boat, right? So if if you kind of had know that in the back of your mind, you have that confidence to really go for it. Um, I mean, going from because the thing is, your life, especially your career, is very very interesting because yeah. you strike me as a person who goes out there, aware of things, learn from different people. Um, can you we we'll also love to elaborate, you know, how you then developed your skills during that time to go into the career which you are now, you know, yeah, being that so, mentor. So that's that's a good a good entree into it. As part, during my during my working career, a lot of a lot of people would come to me and say, Have you got five minutes? Can you yeah. help me out? And and I used to see a lot of people struggling and not realizing their potential because they self sabotaged is one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. They didn't have the confidence is another point. So for a number of reasons, which we'll probably talk about a bit later, but those are a number of reasons why people often don't realize their potential. But during my time, a lot of people came to me and then they said, can you help my friend who doesn't work at the company? So yeah. now it becomes a bigger network. And I didn't even think twice about it. It was just like helping, helping a mate. Right. Yeah. Um, and then fast. So over time, this accumulated, right? And I thought, I, I really like to see people get that promotion or get you know feel better about yeah. themselves and their job but it, right. it's just something i enjoy seeing and, and then i had a coach one of my first coaches we were talking about different things and and, and i spent quite a bit of time hiring bath university interns and undergrad interns and i used to talk about them and he's like wow you really like seeing developing these interns he said you should think about being a coach Right. And he planted the seed. And that's yeah. that seed I've been watering the seed ever since. Right. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah. So H, thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> Little shout, shout out, out H. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, he's, uh, but sometimes you need these prods. You know, you just do yeah. things and you don't actually think consciously about them. Yeah. yeah. That's how I've, I yeah. think it's funny because it's something that you enjoy. So you never thought, oh, I could do this even more so on a larger scale. Because it's just something you do anyway, right? Exactly. You don't really have to, yeah. you know, that's. Yeah. Turning, uh, turning your hobby into a business, that's. Something, yeah. something that you like, you're passionate for. Yeah, to your business, that's, that's the best yeah. thing there is. Amazing, I, I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of why we started podcasting as well. Yeah. this just became a, a hobby that we really wanted to do, and it just developed. Yeah, look know. how look how well it's going. I mean, it's super successful. I think you guys are doing amazing. Not super yeah, yet, you. but uh, hopefully with we're you. Hopefully be there it soon. will be. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. the, that's the plan, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, one of uh, an well, interesting question actually, and um, that we had a brief discussion about as well, um, is. Of course, you're dealing with a variety of different clients, right? Yeah. People in different positions, interesting stages of their career. What would you say are probably some of the more most common problems that you've that these people have come to you with? Yeah, I'm glad you asked the question because this will be relevant for a lot of people that are doubting themselves and thinking about should they get a coach or not. Yeah. Remarkably, a lot of the problems are common, whether you're a person starting your career or whether you're a ceo yeah right? right and all boils down to you often lose your confidence and losing your confidence impacts the way that you go forward so there's a, a couple of things so one they don't have a they don't have a preconceived idea where they want to go to they have no idea what career they they want to follow so a question i would ask and and people can think about if you could have any job in the world right now what would it be mm. Mm. difficult question to answer yeah it another is. one similar to that is if you could work for three companies in the world, who would they be? Of course, what part is one of them? <laughs> oh, yeah. But, there we go. but those are questions which you'd be surprised with on your journey of careers, a lot of people don't have. But yeah, people lack self-confidence. People have imposter syndrome. 
they overthink things, um, they procrastinate. So these are common threads which run across people's careers. And that's and across the board, right? Different levels, board. yeah. Mm. And when you become a leader, leadership is a lonely place. So what happens is you doubt yourself. Yeah, okay. Because self-confidence problems. Yeah. Right. So there are common common threads that, that run through um, yeah. through all. all I'm, actually, I'm actually relating to that because like as we're progressing, because, you know, we have what by itself and as we're progressing and, and, and yeah, it's working, like things are happening with it, but there's always that doubt. And, it, and rather than decreasing, it keeps on increasing. The more stuff gets done for some reason. And um, I mean, like to me, it's, I think like, like you just mentioned, uh, it's it whether you're already just kind of starting up somewhere in your career or as a founder or wherever, um, whereas someone who's very established and has a great career. But what is it like? Who is your target market? I'm glad you asked that because it's something that we always try and find out what's our niche, right? Yeah. yeah. And when I first started, I thought, okay, I want to be a mindset and performance coach. So mindset, the reason for that, if you change your mindset, you can change your life. So yeah. I still believe in that. And that goes for whether you're in, in business, in your personal life, in sport, whatever. Your mindset is everything. What I found is that I have a lot of people coming to me for careers, career right. coaching. Yeah. And maybe it's because of my background or I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what, what the magnet is that's attracting them, mm -hmm. but a lot of people are coming for career and also life coaching. So again, those problems I mentioned, imposter syndrome, overthinking, lack of confidence, they could be life issues or they could be career issues. Career issues. Yes. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. A question for you. I know it's your podcast, but if you could have any podcast guests, who would it be? I think James I would, Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> I think we already have him exactly. Yeah. Um, any any guess? I think a um, um, name just popped in my mind, and it was Jordan Peterson. Okay. Well, the reason I asked Peterson. was because of my question. If you could have any job in the world, what would it be? In your yeah. case, it's if you could have any guest, who would it be? Yeah. Why yeah. not? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, it is our aim to grow this so much that eventually that we will be able to get. Uh, Stephen Bartlett, I was going to say. I thought you'd say. Oh, that would be, <laughs> oh, that would be way too amazing. Yeah. Actually, you know what? He I only think, does podcasts yeah. where he's not a guest. Maybe that's the that's the, we need to do. I was going to say, I think that's probably more yeah. closer to us yeah. as well. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah sorry, nice. just turn the tables. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> that's that's great. I mean, we're we're having a conversation, exactly. right? That's, yeah. the, exactly. that's the beauty of it. Yeah. What is the um? Sorry, I didn't, I know you was about to say something, but no, it's all good. In terms of um, what is every time like you know you have. Uh, let's say someone who has an established career mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you know they actually have uh, problems which are way more common uh, than us but um the, the self-doubt what is what is the the one common thing that i guess you, you i guess you advise on or you can you coach them on there's a couple of things but one of the key points is it's really the direct they lost touch with where they want to go mm. So then yeah. every move you make, you're doubting yourself. And it's partly because we're all busy. So we become hamster on a wheel, right? Right. It's Friday tomorrow. Then it's Monday. Then it's Friday. And suddenly the year runs away with us. And, and you, when you have those moments, you sit back and say, oh, I haven't done half the stuff I wanted to do. I'm not sure where I am. And this is, this is the seed of self-doubt. Yeah. Right. You've been working for five years. What's your next step? Where do you want to go? What are your dreams? Do you want to be... The CEO of the company, you want to set your own business up? Often it is, I want to set my own business up, but I've been doing this now much longer than I expected. Right. And you, you're kind of stuck. I feel, people feel like they're stuck. Yeah. So you have to unpack that, slowly work out, get the goals. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways we do it is, I know it's goal season, January, everybody's crazy about New Year's resolutions and goals. Yeah. But talking about where do you want to go at the end of 2023? And mm -hmm. people will say, okay, I want to, yeah lose weight or do this or do that and put a number on it. I bring it back to the next three months because one year out is a long time. Yes, yeah. it is. And you have to make smaller steps and take yeah. smaller steps. Right. 100%. Would you say that's one of the key, um, almost like mental exercises to do? Here's the goal, let's break it down. And would yeah. you say that's probably the main thing that people could take away in the audience as well where, to get direction in life? Mm. Yeah. How do you climb Mount Everest? You have to go one step at a time, right? Yeah. But you're not going to... So Mount Everest is your goal at the end of the year. You probably have to scale some smaller peaks to get there. Right? Yeah. And you run a marathon, let's say, something that's more tangible. People want to run a marathon. But you've got to run that 5K first. 
So mm. you bring it back to smaller steps and you work on those. Start achieving those goals. You build up confidence. Yeah. Compounding yeah. Imp- interest, right? Compounding impact of small wins yeah. equals big results. Yeah. It's like you're seeing yourself as, as, in, well, as in, you're making this, the person see themselves as a project in a way. Because like you, like, like you mentioned, three months, you have quarter one, quarter two, quarter three kind of thing. Um, and step by step, you're breaking it down. What are the tasks? What, are, what is it that you got to work on? So every day, you have to be working towards something. So if you're 1% better every day, you will, you will start improving. So right. if you have a goal for the next three months, and none of this is rocket science, right? But we get bored of basics and bored of, of, bored of, uh, of, of being consistent, right? Mm. That's why right. people fail. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast myself, actually. I think it was Ed Milet or one of them. And, and he had mm-hmm. the coach, uh, Kobe Bryant's old manager on, or coach. Yeah. And, and Kobe Bryant used to do exercises, basic exercises. And his coach was like, you're the, one of the greatest in the world. Why are you doing that? And he said, the reason I am the best, confidence, <laughs> is because I don't get bored of the basics. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah, that yeah. resonated with me. And it's the same when you talk about getting your goals, right? Break it down into small steps every day. You've got to have a game plan, an action plan. So, mm. yes, a project plan. Yeah, yeah. It's like Bruce Lee said, I'm not scared of the person who has learned 10,000 kicks. I'm scared of the person who's learned this one kick 10,000 times. Yeah, exactly. It's the same. Exactly. But we, none, of, none of us are really prepared to do that, right? Because we get yeah. bored of it. I yeah. think it's interesting as well because when you are really, really good at the basics, your confidence grows. Because a lot of times when you're trying the fancy stuff, it comes from a place of insecurity, really. Because yeah. you're not really doing the basics. In the back of your mind, you're like, well, I actually can't do this part, you know, yeah. Yeah. if we got us to do it. Yeah. But that's a great thing for confidence as well. I mean, I, I actually wanted to go down a different route as well. Sure. Um, but one of the things that I read your website as well, and you mentioned accountability. I know it's a similar theme, but I think a lot of people struggle to be self-reflective mm. and to be accountable for mm. their own careers. What's one common theme, maybe a story that you've had, and what's one thing that you would recommend for people to be more accountable? So for me, accountability is the single most important thing, right? Because I was actually talking to a client today and I said, um, okay, he, this, this, they want to go to gym, bring daily habits, go to the gym five times in a week, right? Mm. Right. So if I don't follow up and they're not accountable, so my, my DNA as a coach is two things, right? I work with you. Mm. And I said, I hold you accountable. And what what that means is, so now he's going to go to the gym five times a week. He's going to get a text from me on the third day to say, how's it going? Or I will say to him, after the second day, text me to say, you've been to the gym two days in a row. So that accountability, because if if we have a session next week and it's, I didn't go to the gym because it was too cold, we're back to square one. We made no progress. So accountability is so critical in terms of making that next step right holding yourself accountable but i also think having an accountability buddy yeah. or partner yeah. that's probably like one of the easiest things to Easy. actually kind of try to get away i mean myself speaking as well i used to be heavy on gym but since the past five years nothing at all and the main reason is i i, I have my alarm set up every single morning but then i'm like oh man the bed is very comfortable i'm just gonna lay in what's what's it gonna do and and, and people that is something that happens. So this exact example you raise about people not doing going to gym or not doing something for five or five years or three years in the, in in one of my clients' examples. I recommend tell somebody about it. So if you say you're going to go to gym, then it's up to you to check in. So you hold each other accountable, right? But so you've you've each got something that you can hold each other accountable for, because right. then it works. Then it you you both have their best interests at heart. Okay, yeah. come on. You said you're going to go. So that's a little tip that can can work for anybody. Actually, it doesn't have to be about going to the gym. It could be, could be a lot of different things. It's like I'm going to do, uh, listen to three podcasts a week. Okay, well, have you listened? To it? Well, read a, read twelve books a year. Right. How's the books? They're, they're small things, but they all help. I suppose that's brilliant, actually, because sometimes when we, the easiest way to get being held accountable is when you get reminders, like you mentioned. And sometimes I think people in day-to-day lives, they struggle to hold themselves accountable. Because like you said, you do different stuff in your mind. So having that accountable buddy, because all they have to really do is message and check in, Yeah. right? Yeah, message and also I'd say phone because how many times do we get messages on our phone we ignore That's or alarms? So get somebody, to schedule, call them, right? So A, it also helps you communicate with your mates or, yeah. or your family or friends and just it keeps the dialogue going. Yeah. So what are what are what are the some of the exercises or let's say 
uh, habits that you have kind of installed in your life that help you improve every day? So I'm a bit crazy like that. I, I, I get up early in the morning. I get up at 4.30, you know, and right. I hold myself accountable. You'll see on my Instagram, I post every morning. I'll post a message and the time varies, but it's before 5 a.m. And that's my oh. thing. I don't do it for anybody else, but if it, somebody learns from that, I, yeah. it keeps me accountable. Right, so yeah. it's worked for me. That's a bit crazy. People, you know, if you like your stuff, that's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Saying that though, just in a serious point, no matter if you get up at eight o'clock or nine o'clock, as long as you get up before you start work, and I call it putting your body armor on for the day to win the day, mm -hmm. right? You need to have time to compress yourself. If you get out of bed and you're chasing the day, the day is going to be a disaster. Mm. Right. So uh, that's something I think everybody can do. Just get up 15 minutes earlier, compose yourself. If it's have a cup of coffee or or just you know, do a few errands that you know you're going to have to do during the day, put yeah. the washing on it, whatever, whatever it is, it sets the day up. So would you yeah. say get um, uh, to put the body armor on, would you say get up um, like 15 minutes before you usually would? Or what, what would you say roughly as a time? Let's say I have to start work at 8.30. Well, well, I would say I would say get up 15 minutes early because if I said get up an hour early, you'll never do it. <laughs> so 15 okay. minutes is small. You do that for five days and you realize it's not so bad. And okay. then you start becoming productive. Now, not everybody's a morning person. We use an example in the morning. Some people are more productive in the evening, right? Right. So in this case, we talk about the morning. I don't, I don't want to be somebody's 5 a.m. club. It doesn't yeah. work for everybody, but you ask, it works for me. Works but for I think you. we can learn from that. So just okay. get up 15 minutes earlier and, get, and, and you, you've got 15 minutes to do things that you wouldn't normally do, right? Mm. Right. So it's yeah. set yourself, have a cup of you know, coffee or, or just center yourself mm. Mm. i definitely agree with that because whenever i do get up earlier i do feel like i'm mentally just on it yeah. Yeah. whereas when you get up later like you said you're mentally just chasing and chasing yeah. and chasing like even even like for me what i've started doing now is when i get up in the morning instead of just like staying in my pajamas or anything i'll just get ready even if i've got nothing to do i'll just get ready and you just feel like you're ready to take on the day and that has really yeah. personally has helped me a lot as so well. you see these are tips Simple. that anybody can do the other thing is mm. I haven't been to gym for five years, right? In your case. Right. <laughs> okay. You don't so you like don't it. have to go to gym. You can go, and I started this, not that it, it, it worked for me. I, I, I'm, I was useless at press ups. You can see now I don't have any muscles, so I'm still not very good. But I no, started to do, I said edited. I'm going to do five press ups every single day of the year. Right. Right. Now, five press ups yeah. grew to 25 press ups. But let's not get crazy, right? <laughs> 20, but every single day, so you wake up and you do five press ups and 10 sit ups. Right. Anybody can do that. Anyone Anybody can, can do that. Yeah. And then suddenly, if you don't go to gym, you've at least done some exercise. Exactly. So you calm your mind. Yeah. So what happens is, I must go to, it, these things constantly gnaw away at you during the day. I right. must go to gym. And you don't go to gym. I haven't been to gym for three years. And you start beating yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. And it erodes yeah. your confidence. So little things like, get up 15 minutes early if you can. I would recommend that. Five press-ups. Uh, or sit ups, or it could be people like yoga class, a seven minute yoga class. You know, on YouTube, there's loads of these things now. Right, yeah. The key is free. small, Stretching. simple. That's small, the key. Small. Yeah. But yeah. they compound. Small and they accumulate. Things, yeah. Consistency. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Compound. 100%. I mean, uh, one of the things um, as well, which I realized that, you know, the tips that you give to for confidence, accountability, is look at the complete goal, take a step back. And do those small steps, mm. and I think that's that, that's what it is, right? Like yeah. you mentioned, it's the simple here, yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Key message yeah. as well as I said, anybody who wants, you know, two two or three people, if they want a free session, you know, reach out to you and or reach out to me. But obviously, anybody that comments or found this useful, then happy to do a, oh, great. a free forty five minutes. Session. That's a big one. That's something that I recommend here? you guys to do one hundred percent because I'm gonna take advantage of that for sure. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna make another account and just comment myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Can't I can <laughs> yeah, exactly. charge if I just yeah. put the names around. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Really appreciate you having um coming on on, on what pod. No, I really um, and it. um yeah. I think you are probably one of the one really literally the definition of what pod, which is what a time to podcast. Yeah. And which is like what a time to improve your life. Well, yeah. improve your mindset. It's a theme as well, because we our theme is be the best version of yourself. Yeah. And that's something that you really specialize in, really, right? Yeah. And I try, I try to get people. Every day is a gift. We've got to make the most of it, right? Oh, I think that's a beautiful way of ending it yeah, actually as well yeah amazing well James look um, uh, thank you very much for coming on 
Um, we're looking forward to potentially even having in the f again in the future. Yeah. We're definitely going to potentially collaborate as well. So we'll see how that goes. Sure. Like, like James said as well, if you guys want a free session, let us know. We'll refer you. And um, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Is there anything else? With of your course... following, let's restrict it to three. Otherwise, I'll be so busy. You've got so many followers. I tried to go to that much. Three lucky uh, people, right? Yeah. Okay. Who would you? Uh, just, just, just because yeah. there's a. I know you have a various sort of uh, people coming on, but uh, when it comes to your uh, like ideal person, who mm. would you love to coach? Who would I love to? That is an unbelievable question. You're throwing it back at me now. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know, actually. I'd love to coach Roger Federer, but he doesn't need tennis coaching. I, <laughs> yeah. coaching. Um, I actually, that's a, that's a very good question. I've never thought about it. Right? Well, there you definitely, go. <laughs> definitely caught me off guard. I'll come yeah. back and I'll fill you in on that. Amazing. I guess we'll, 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 do, we'll, do. we'll put definitely. it on the pod as well. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, James, thank you very much again. I uh, hope you guys have learned a lot as well. We definitely have. Um, guys, if you have any questions as well in particular, not just sessions, do let us know. Um, what we'll do is, you know, we may potentially even ask you and refer it to the next um, episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, look, we've got more guests on the way as well. Um, please do like and subscribe as well. We don't actually mention it as much as we should. Yeah. But honestly, your subscriptions, your views help us out as well. 100%. Um, check out James's channel as well. Um, yeah. We've got, we're going to put that link as well. Yeah. Do you want to mention below. it? On Just Instagram, yeah. james.edwards.coaching. Or my website, James Edwards Coaching. Great, you'll yeah. see the website here now. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Perfect. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Um, join us next week as well. And yeah, thank you. Very really nice ending. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, <laughs> peace. peace.